Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. Thanks for watching the show. Appreciate you sharing these videos with people that you know and care about. Appreciate you supporting the channel. Hit the thumbs up button, like the videos, and please also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And also, please make sure uh, to check to make sure that you have not been unsubscribed. It is happening. Uh, a couple things stuck out to me today I wanted to share with you before uh, the weekend. First, just a quick update on the markets. They finished uh, in the green across the board, Dow Jones, S&P, and the NASDAQ. Uh, I found it very interesting that the, the stocks finished uh, that strong. The Dow was up almost 300 points because the 10-year bond yield, if you guys were tracking it today, uh, it ran up 10 basis points. I show it at um, 4.38%. That is pretty high. We're on our way back to four and a half percent. You know, uh, the markets used to react negatively uh, when the ten-year yield ran up at least that fast. Okay, uh, so it, it didn't uh, seem to phase the markets today. Gold finished down a little bit, eight or nine dollars. Silver finished a little bit off, uh, but. The story was obviously today, uh, the jobs report uh, that was released uh, earlier this morning. And I had seen an article on CNBC, which, uh, which, which it was put out there before the numbers, the official numbers were released. I want to share that with you, what the estimates were, and then what the actual numbers were. And it's amazing. Now, they're trying to explain it away, say it was an outlier because of the hurricanes and because of the Boeing strike. So they're saying, well, we really can't, you know, dig, you know, give it too much credibility of the fact that it was one of the worst job numbers in a long, long time. Yet, uh, leave your comments below. I believe that that's also why the markets rallied today, because Whereas they're going to try to explain it away as an outlier, they're also hoping that uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell uses it as a, let's say, I don't want to say excuse, uh, but maybe justification uh, to keep lowering interest rates. I mean, markets are now pricing in a 25 basis point cut at the next meeting. Uh, there, it was getting kind of uh, hazy there for a while as to whether there would be a pause. So I think, again, not a market expert, uh, just uh, one person's opinion here, layperson opinion. I think the markets rallied because the job numbers were so bad that, uh, that, that, that they expect the Fed will keep on its rate cutting cycle. And of course, the markets love uh, their free money, right? So let me jump into uh, the CNBC uh, pre-release article I saw this morning early, and it said that uh, the rise jobs report is expected to show the lowest pace of hiring in years. It says powerful hurricanes and major labor strike could take a chunk out of the non-farm payrolls count for October, which is expected to be the slowest month for job creation in nearly four years. Economists surveyed by Dow Jones expect the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, to report Friday that payrolls expanded by just 100,000 on the month, held back by Hurricanes Helene and Milton, and as well as the strike at Boeing. If their prediction is accurate, it will be the lowest total job since December 2020 and a huge drop uh, from September's 254,000. And we'll get to that. Those numbers were also revised lower with the actual numbers today. The report, which will be released at 8.30 a.m., which would have been Eastern time this morning, it was, is expected, however, to indicate that the unemployment rate will be unchanged at 4.1%. Um, it says on wages, average hourly, hourly earnings are projected to rise 0.3% for the month and 4% from a year ago. Uh, and this, the, the author of the article says the top line numbers will be a bit noisy, but I think there'll be enough there to continue to determine that the soft landing is intact and the U.S. economy remains in good shape. So that was the CNBC article before the official numbers came out. And then Zero Hedge, of course, did an article uh, once the uh, job numbers were released, the official numbers. And the title of the article today from Zero Hedge is Jobs Shock, October Payrolls, Huge Miss as Private Jobs Go Negative for the First Time Since 2020. And we talk about how many government jobs get created to bolster 
these uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers, right, uh, versus how many private jobs, right, and and that, and that the government jobs seem to be created out of thin air to basically substantiate whatever narrative they want to substantiate. So the article says the BLS reported the highly anticipated number, and it was close. The monthly print was only twelve thousand jobs, because the uh, Zero Hedge uh, author said they were expecting a negative print. So it came in at twelve thousand jobs created for the month of November, October. Excuse me, a huge drop from the pre-revision two hundred fifty-four thousand in October, and of course that was revised from two fifty-four down to two twenty-three. Uh, and it says just 13,000 away from a negative print. The print was so low, it was only above the two lowest estimates, it says. That means that it was a three sigma miss to estimates. So the economists were thinking about 100,000, and it came in at 12,000. It says previous months were revised sharply lower once again. We always discuss this on the channel. They, they put numbers out there. In this case, I mean, they were horrible. Uh, but you also get revisions to prior months, you know, glowing uh, numbers, right? So it says August was revised down by 81,000 from 159,000 to 78,000. And September was revised down by 31,000 from 254,000 to 223,000, like I just said. With these revisions, employment in August and September combined is 112,000 lower than previously reported. That means that even after the monster September revision, when 818,000 jobs were removed, seven of the nine past months were again revised lower. It says if one excludes excludes the 400, excuse me, the 40,000 government jobs, private payrolls in fa were in fact negative to the tune of 28,000, down from 223,000 pre-revision last month. Think about that. From 223,000 pre-revision last month to negative 28,000. And the first negative print since December of 2020. It says unemployment rate printed at 4.1% unchanged from last month. Uh, says that manufacturing is a disaster with the U.S. losing manufacturing jobs for three months in a row and four of the last five. They said, they said the article says you cannot blame that on hurricanes. More government jobs were added in October than all private jobs lost in the month. So there is your jobs report in a nutshell. Uh, and let's continue to see if, how the markets uh, digest this uh, uh, going to next week. Because they're so bad, even they're say, although they're saying it's an outlier because of the weather events, uh, trust me, the markets are using it, uh, it with fingers crossed that Powell is going to continue cutting interest rates. The next article I want to share with you real briefly because it's a shocking number as well. At a Bazinga, I saw it uh, yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. Commercial real estate foreclosures are surging across the United States with foreclosures climbing 48% in September year over year. California's numbers are especially striking with a massive, listen to this, 238% increase in commercial real estate foreclosures in California, per Atom's recent report as detailed by the Business Insider. So that is a massive amount. It says the trend is likely uh, influenced by rising interest rates and lingering effects from post-pandemic shifts in demand, particularly for office spaces. States like New York and Florida are also seeing big foreclosure increases of 48% and 49% respectively. The broader economic shifts, it says, are weighing heavily on commercial real estate. Debt continues to mature while demand remains weak. Office space has been hit particularly hard as businesses adapt to hybrid work models. Uh, we've talked about that on this channel uh, many times before. Here we go. Industry experts polled by a business insider are divided on the outlook. Some see foreclosures continuing to rise, especially in markets where properties are difficult to repurpose or reposition. Many commercial properties, uh, certainly aging office buildings, require substantial investment uh, to, to have them converted into housing or mixed-use spaces. Um, so I thought that was crazy. I've done shows before about the commercial real estate uh, 
problem we have in this country and the fact that a lot of these loans are coming due in the coming year and years. And let's see what happens. If the rates come down, will they come down low enough to allow these people to get out of out from under these commercial loans uh, and into a, a, a rate that they can actually afford to service the debt on? That remains to be seen. Big week coming up, obviously. Tuesday is the, uh, is, uh, is the election, uh, the elections. So um, everybody be vigilant over the weekend. Please, uh, you know, take the time to think through preparedness, think through your plan. If something une- unexpected happens, uh, let's say not only, you know, early next week at, you know, on Tuesday, but more concerning to me is in the week and weeks following. All right. So I know I'm being a bit redundant with that. But uh, it's time that we all sharpen our senses right now and be very, very uh, aware of what is going on, okay? Because the lines have been drawn, a lot of uh, angst, a lot of, uh, you know, stuff being, being uh, spewed on both sides. Again, uh, appreciate all of you for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.